Hey friends, Kalpesh is here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Automotive Crux. Today, I am going to explain you about the traction limited acceleration performance of the vehicle. I have already explained you about the power limited acceleration in my previous videos. If you haven't gone through yet, visit them. Link for the same has been provided in the description below. So click on it and enjoy my previous videos. Now let's discuss about the traction limited acceleration now as it name suggests the acceleration performance in this case it is limited by the traction when the traction comes to the picture we need to consider the friction available in between the road wheels and the ground so to estimate the traction limited acceleration it has been assumed that the enough power from the engine is available and the major limiting factor for the acceleration performance of vehicle it is the coefficient of friction mu from the basic fundamental equation of rolling resistance we can say fx it is equals to mu w where fx it stands for the tractive effort in the longitudinal direction mu it is the peak coefficient of friction and W is weight on the drive wheels. Now, mu it mainly depends on the friction, which is due to the uh, road surface and the tire surface. So you can consider mu as a constant term here. Now the W in the traction limited acceleration W it depends on the static and the dynamic load due to the acceleration and transverse weight shift due to drive top now now static and dynamic load due to the acceleration that we have already seen during the discussion of dynamic axle load in my previous video so whenever we required to calculate this static and dynamic load due to acceleration we can adapt the expression from the previous theories so now the important one is this transverse weight transfer due to drive top i am emphasizing on this statement it is transverse weight transfer due to the drive top this weight transfer it is not due to the acceleration or braking it is only due to the drive top and the direction of weight transfer it is transverse you can also consider the lateral direction both are same so let's try to estimate transverse weight transfer due to the drive torque we have already uh, seen the static and dynamic load due to the acceleration once we have uh, both values then with the help of the total w weight on the drive wheels we can with the help of the total weight w we can calculate the tractive force required to accelerate our vehicle let's try to estimate the transverse weight transfer due to the drive top considering the transverse weight shift we can say we can say this the transverse weight shift occurs on all solid drive axle whether on the front or the rear rear of the vehicle the basic reaction generated on the rear axle has been shown in this figure this reaction it is due to the torque imposed by the drive shaft in the differential box so the drive torque it is indicated by td due to this drive torque td which is imposed by the drive shaft into the differential the chassis may roll and it creates some compressing and extending effect into the springs and due to this effect the roll torque ts is produced the direction of roll torque ts ts it indicates the roll torque so the direction of this roll torque ts it is opposite to the drive torque td now total load on the rear total load on the rear side that we have already discussed in the dynamic axle load theory it 
it can be indicated by WR. The total load WR it is distributed in between the two wheels that's why here load on each wheel is considered as WR by 2. Now this WY it stands for the lateral or the transverse weight shift due to the drive torque occurs. In this case the drive torque it is in the counterclockwise direction. This is the reason why the transverse weight is added towards the left hand side and subtracted the same amount towards the right hand side. So WY it indicates the transverse weight shift due to the drive torque. Now the important thing that we one should keep in mind that if the axles are non-locking type, if the axles are non-locking type, the torque delivered to both wheels will be limited by the traction limit on the most lightly loaded wheels. So let's try to estimate the lateral weight shift WY first and then with the help of the values for WY we will try to estimate the total total load on each wheel. We can easily calculate the load on the axle, total load on axle and with the help of this total load on axle we can easily calculate the tractive force this is the simple flow of this um, mathematical modeling so let's first estimate the wy so to estimate the wy transverse weight shift occurred due to the drive torque first we are considering the uh, equilibrium condition and uh, considering the total sum of torque produced about the center point must be zero so the torque about point here we are considering the point o the total torque about the point o must be zero the torque producing forces we can express in this manner w r by 2 plus w y for the left hand side wheel minus w r by 2 plus w y this whole term it is multiplied by the perpendicular distance t by 2 with respect to the point O then the TS it is considered positive because this roll torque it is in the clockwise direction likewise drive torque it is in counterclockwise direction that's why it is considered as a negative by simplifying this equation finally we are getting the expression for the transverse weight shift WY so wy it is equals to we can write td minus ts divided by t this td it is again drive shaft torque ts it is roll roll torque for the suspension and t it indicates the track width now if we have values for the drive torque and the roll torque then we can easily calculate the transverse weight shift with the help of this equation we will try to estimate the drive torque first then we will try to estimate the ro uh, roll torque of the suspension and by substituting the values of td and ts in this equation we will get the final wy td drive torque it can be estimated with the help of the tractive force available at ground so td must be equal to fx into r divided by nf where fx it is the total drive force on the two row, two rear wheels i am again emphasizing on the words here fx it stands for the total drive force from the two rear wheel if we are considering one wheel then then fx must be half r it stands for the tire radius and nf it is a final drive ratio you can call it the gear ratio for the differential we have some expression for the td Okay, now we are trying to as trying to calculate the TS. Once we have a TS, we will put this value, this both values in this equation, and we will try to estimate the WY. So, the roll torque for the suspension we can estimate with the help of Hooke's law, and Hooke's law says that the roll torque produced by a suspension is proportional to the roll angle of the chassis. I am again repeating this statement. The Hooke's law says that 
The roll torque produced by a suspension is proportional to roll angle of the chassis. So, for each suspension, front suspension and rear suspension, we can write TSF roll torque at front must be equal to the K phi F into phi. Here phi it stands for the roll angle and to remove the proportionality constant we have adapted the K phi F which indicates the front suspension roll stiffness front suspension roll stiffness likewise we can write for the rear suspension roll torque TSR must be equal to K phi R into the phi and this K phi it indicates the total roll stiffness or you can write overall roll stiffness which is the summation of front roll stiffness and the real roll stiffness. It's very easy to understand. As we have considered the uh, rear drive or the rear solid axle, we are concentrated on rear uh, suspension roll torque only. Now, the drive torque has a relation with the roll angle, which you can represent in this manner. The drive torque TD it is directly proportional to the roll angle phi by again in the same manner by replacing the proportionality constant we have adapted the roll, sti roll stiffness so we can write td it is equals to k phi into phi and with the help of this equation we can write this one phi it is equals to td divided by k phi and k phi it is the overall roll stiffness we can replace this term with the help of front and rear suspension roll stiffness. So, the phi it becomes TD divided by K phi F plus K phi R. Now, with the help of previous equation, rear suspension roll torque, rear suspension roll torque must be equal to K phi R into the phi, where phi it is now replaced with the help of above equation td divided by k phi f plus k phi r now we have a values for both td in terms of fx and tsr in terms of this td okay now again this drive torque in this expression we can replace with the help of fx term that we have seen in the previous slides this this one okay so by substituting the value of TD and TS in this term WY, we are getting the values for the WY in the terms of FX. So WY it is equals to FX into R divided by NF into T inside the bracket 1 minus K phi R divided by K phi R plus K phi F. By simplifying the equation for this WY, Finally, we are getting this term. This is, we can say, transverse weight shift due to the drive torque. So, the transverse weight shift due to the drive torque, it is equals to Fx, divide, Fx into R divided by Nf into T, K phi F divided by K phi. Now, this Wy, it gives the magnitude of load, lateral load transfer as a function of tractive force and the other vehicle parameters like uh, wheel radius, final drive gear ratio, track width and the suspension stiffness okay overall suspension stiffness the net load on the rear axle during the acceleration will be static plus its dynamic component this we have adapted from the theory of dynamic axle loading condition I have already explained the dynamic axle load in my previous video if you haven't checked it you can check the same or this link for the same video it has been provided in the description below with the help of that fundamental concept we can write wr it is equals to w inside the bracket b by l plus ax divided by g into h by l now focus on this term because during the dynamic axle loading condition the equation be in terms of minus here we considered in the previous theory it is minus because in that case we have considered the gradient resistance and 
it is the resistive force for the movement of the vehicle that's why it was negative in that condition here this wr it is the dynamic ax uh, it is the load load transfer due to the acceleration now while considering the acceleration the load transfer occurs towards the rear side and that's why we need to consider as a plus as a additional weight on the rear side so this is the reason why we considered plus here instead of minus so this wr it equals to w into b by l plus fx divided by mg into h by l with the help of newton's second law this ax it is replaced by fx divided by m because force it is mass times the acceleration this wr it indicates the total load on the rear axle we are intend to calculate the total load on each wheel this total load on the rear axle must be distributed equally in between the two road wheels that's why the load on the right right hand side wheel the load on the rear right hand side wheel it must be equal to wr divided by 2 wr divided by 2 this term okay. so wr it is equals to this this wr divided by 2 minus this w y so this term it indicates the wr by 2 and this negative term fx into r divided by nf into t k phi f divided by k phi it indicates the wy that we have already derived in the previous slide so this expression we can say it indicates the total load on the rear right hand side wheel this with the help of fundamental equation fx it is equals to mu w this indicates the estimation of tractive force considering the coefficient of friction in between the uh, tire and the road and the overall load on the axle considering the two road wheels this coefficient of friction that will be doubled that will be doubled so fx it is equals to twice into mu wrr by substituting the value of wrr from this equation from this equation we are getting the final expression for the fx tractive force and with the help of fx we can easily uh, calculate the acceleration performance of any vehicle okay while considering the traction as a limiting factor we need to focus on the coefficient of friction mu thank you thank you so much guys uh, if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel